So the news came out yesterday from Red Bull Racing that their driver Pierre Gasly was being replaced by Alex Albon from Toro Rosso. And to be honest, I think many of us weren't really surprised that Gasly was getting the boot, but I think a lot of us were surprised it was happening during the summer break. So it's gonna be interesting to see how the rest of the season plays out. It's also gonna be interesting seeing how they're gonna tackle the opening title sequence, because currently at the moment, technically, they're both wearing the wrong race suits, so I'm assuming they're gonna to have to refilm those bits. And they'll have to make changes to the graphics as well, basically swapping Alex and Pierre's name with one another. And so I've got my laptop here today because I thought it'd be fun to recreate some more Formula One graphics and try and put Alex's name onto Red Bull Racing. This will also be the first time you see my process of how I actually recreate the Formula One graphics. But if you just want to skip this entire video and download a template, the link is down in the description below. But let's jump into it. Right, so first off, let's actually look at what we're creating. So it's basically this name strap here, which I've taken from Paddock Pass. So if we just scrub through, it comes out the very bottom there. So it's very complex and it's very different to how it was last year. Last year's one um, had a load of numbers coming up. I basically, this is what last year's one looked like, which I had to sort of recreate when I did the, uh, what the classic Formula One uh, races would look like with modern effects. So how shall I start this? Let's start off with, I think, the background. So what we want to try and do is now get the right transparency. So we're trying to match the colors here. I think that looks about right. Everything's sort of straight cut apart from here. We've got like this nice little curve. One, two, three, four, five, six, so on. And there we go. So now we've got a little thing there. There we go, look at that. That's right on there now. So we've got the line basically there. Cool, let's see what we've done so far. Sweet, so that's what we've got so far basically. Okay, so let's now look at the number here because I remember having to do that before and it was a bit of a tricky one. It looks very blue. So I reckon it starts off with a teen color and then fades to white into what the color is now, basically. So let's do a grid of lines. Okay, cool, we've now got our grid. Let's change the color of it just to red, just so we can see what we're actually working with. Okay, so that's now all of them getting thick. There we go, it starts off with teen color and then fades off into that. Uh, let's figure out which Formula One font it is. That looks about right, so it's green. So next we're gonna look at the text for it. Uh, sort of a pretty simple one. So we've got Max and then in capitals Verstappen. We have to just select the uh, last name and just change that from regular to bold. And that's basically it there. So that's what we built up so far. Now we're going on to the more complicated stuff. So many different layers going on here. So again, we're just gonna match the transparency of what it is at, at that time. So now we've got another two on top of that, which just looks basically the same. Okay, so I think we're over halfway through. So that's where we're currently at. So just missing the logo, need to fix the text animating in. All right, so let's try and get the dimensions sort of right. So to make this work in the template format, um, I'm gonna pre-comp this, so theoretically you could just change your own logo once. Then it has this weird like glare over it, which then wipes off. Right, so this next bit looks a really bit fiddly, so I'm gonna leave you here, I'm just gonna just put my head down, trying to get as much as I can get done, and then ultimately get back to you when I'm finished. Okay, so the project is now fully complete and it's all ready for you guys to have a look at. Uh, this is gonna be like a quick little walkthrough so you understand how you can change the parameters and learn how to export it. So when you open up the project, it should be pretty self-explanatory. There's two compositions, there's export here and change team logo. So let's look at some of the other layers as well. So here we've got change team color. So if you click on this layer and go into effects controls, here you just got a simple eye drop color tool so you can change it to, let's change it to like red for example. So if we just zoom here, you can see that it's uh, changed the red bar, changed the red lighting here. And also if we zoom back a little bit as well, you can see that everything else has changed. So if we were to change this to uh, green for example, everything is already animated for you. Likewise, it's also really easy to change all the text. So let's change the team name to, as always, Team Countryside. Likewise, it's also really easy to change the driver name as well, but just remember that there's two fonts being used on one layer. You've got one regular and one bold. And so if we just double click on the driver name here, and let's just um, accidentally write in my name, Matt Amos, doesn't look correct. So what you need to do, first of all, is your first name gonna be in capitalized case, and the second name in capitals, and then you can just literally click and drag over your last name, go over to character, and on the Formula One uh, fonts which are included on the pack, drop down to bold, 
and there you go. Also really easy to change the driver position number, so literally at the very bottom here, just double click and put in whatever number you want. Does also work for double digits as well. So the last thing to change is the team logo, so really simple, head over to change team logo, click on the composition, make sure your playhead is at the very beginning of the timeline, and let's just uh, delete that off. Now we are racing for team countryside, so of course we're going to bring in a leaf, Press S for scales to help you uh, make it a bit smaller. For some people, you're really bringing in logos and such, it's gonna have a white or different colored background. And obviously we want to have that completely separated. So really easy way to do that is to head over to Roto Brush. So Roto Brush tool at the very top and then double click onto the layer. Make sure also your playhead is at the very beginning. That's a key key factor. So you double click onto the layer and then you've got this little, uh, little, brush, little brush here. To make it bigger or smaller, you hold down Command and click and you basically drag forward or drag backwards for your different brush size and then let go of the click when you're happy. Then basically what you're gonna just do is paint the object that you want to keep in. So of course we just wanna keep in uh, the leaf. So you just click and drag and hold it down. And you can see here, it's got a little purple like outer line. That's basically telling you the edge of what is gonna keep in and everything out of that is gonna keep out. Let's say for example though, you accidentally go off into the white area and all of a sudden this whole area is now included. Two things you can do. First of all, you can hold down Alt, which is basically the, the remove paintbrush, where you just sort of do the exact same as before, and it'll tell the um, it'll tell After Effects what bits you don't want included, or you can just do Command Z and go back to where. Once you're all happy, at the very bottom there is a freeze button. Basically, this function is used for rotoscoping for video. That's basically where you are sort of cutting out an object from the background to sort for something like this. But we're basically using this for a photo, so it's uh, sort of freezing all of that process down. And that's the reason why we had to have the playhead at the very beginning. And then if we just play it through, we can see our logo is now there. Now with Formula One, they have their uh, logos a bit off center to the right. So what we can always do is go back to change team logo, press down on P, and then with the left slider, we can just bunch it over across a bit more, just so then we've got a bit of more of a desired look of what we want. So yeah, that looks all right for me. Go back to the beginning, play through, there we go. And then to export, we go over to Composition, Add to Render Queue, head down to Output Module and click on that. And you need to make sure your format is QuickTime and your channels are RGB and Alpha. And then Format Options, you click on that, go onto the drop down, and it will be Apple ProRes 4444. Now, a few people messaged me on the last team uh, radio project, basically saying they didn't have that in their After Effects. You need to have Adobe After Effects CC for this to work. If you have a legal copy of Adobe After Effects, it, this comes as standard. If you don't have that, I can't really help you out, unfortunately. There isn't any audio in this, so you can just click audio output off, click OK, then output you, which is basically where you're exporting it to, then click render, and then you're done. So how did you get a sponsorship deal with Red Bull? Well, uh, they came to me and obviously I said, yes, please. So yeah, it's been a real honor to represent them. So that basically wraps up this video, but before we go, you might have noticed some awesome artwork at the very back there, and that is thanks to our sponsor, Display. Display are one of the leading metal poster manufacturers with thousands of designs on their websites done by thousands of artists. And I like their products so much that I've got a few of my own. This one here is a tribute to James Hunt, a circuit layout of one of my favorite tracks, Mount Panorama, and this awesome Back to the Future poster with a flying DeLorean. As I said, they've got a massive variety out on offer, so if you click the link down in the description below, have a look around, and if there's something you like, make sure to use code MATT at checkout to get 15% off. Well, thanks very much for watching. If you want to see more of my videos, make sure to click subscribe over here. And if you want to see some other videos I've made, then click the videos over there as well. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you next time.